Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 226, I want to talk a little bit about what companies can expect as they start to enforce more return to the office policies. There's no doubt that the pandemic exasperated some tensions that were already in the workforce, and they exasperated and accelerated some friction that already existed in terms of hybrid, distributed, and office-based work. But many companies now in 2023 are beginning to shift more towards a return to office posture and shying away to some extent from the hybrid and distributed work that we've seen in years past. I want to address some of those issues in this episode of our podcast and talk about some of the things, some of the challenges that you might hear from employees about the potential loss of workforce, where they simply may not want to return to the office again. Here are some key ways, actually eight specific things that I think we will see as this trend, if this trend continues, or if your company decides to do this. The first one is the direct outgrowth of the pandemic, and that is health concerns. That some employees will have valid health concerns, especially in the context of a pandemic that has never really gone away. They might fear the risk of contracting illnesses in this communal office setting. They may um, consider leaving if remote work is not an option for them. Number two is work-life balance. That remote work has offered your workforce increased flexibility in managing their work-life balance. Requiring a return to the office might disrupt that balance, causing increased dissatisfaction with your employees and prompting some to seek alternate arrangements, alternate employment arrangements, or leaving your organization. Number three is the commute and the expense associated with that commute. Employees may face longer commutes and increased expenses associated with having to return to the office. Transportation costs, parking, child care, wear and tear on your vehicle, gas, oil, and others. This could make them contemplate leaving for a more cost-attractive option. Number four is productivity. Some employees have found they're simply more productive working at home, working remotely, and they might be concerned that return to the office will result in decreased productivity due to distractions in the office and other factors. Number five is reskilling. Employees that have adapted to remote work might have acquired new skills or may have adjusted or adapted their roles accordingly. Return to the office might require reskilling or adjusting to different work processes, and that could be a source of frustration. Number six is that they simply have a preference for remote work. Many employees have expressed a preference for remote work, and if this preference is not accommodated, then they may seek other employment. They may choose to leave for a company that has a more flexible work policy. The seventh is talent competition. As remote work has become more widely accepted, organizations that don't offer this flexibility may face challenges attracting and retaining talent. Skilled employees might simply seek out companies that have more flexible policies and choose to leave because right now it's an employee's market. And last but not least is employee burnout. Forcing employees back to the office without considering their mental and emotional well-being can lead to burnout. This in turn can result in higher turnover as employees uh, seek healthier work environments from their perspective. In order to mitigate the potential loss of your workforce, you should carefully evaluate the reasons behind your return to office requirements. You should have open and transparent communication with your employees, and you should consider offering hybrid work arrangements to balance in work or in office and remote work to meet both the business needs you may have and your employee preferences. Adapting to these changing dynamics of work preferences will be crucial for retaining a skilled and motivated workforce. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.